In this video, we will be covering one of the first and one of the easiest tests to set up with your Nortec 600 flaw detector from Olympus. Now you can use any eddy current tester for this that's got an impedance plane display and the functionality is going to be similar. Buttons may be a different place. Um, but yeah, they're all going to work basically the same. So for this one, I can just pick any of these applications really. I'll go to surface cracks and I'll just hit enter. I'm going to turn that alarm gate off because I don't need that box there. And what I'm using is a conductivity probe. This is one kilohertz to 50 kilohertz. So let's just go and set it to 50 kilohertz. And the test we're going to do is just a, we're going to set up a conductivity curve so we can identify different materials. So let's just hit null and see where our null point is. So it's down in the center. Well, when you're performing conductivity curves with sample blocks like this, this one is ferrite, 304 stainless, copper, nickel, magnesium, 7075 T6 aluminum, and 7075 zero aluminum. When you're using samples like that, Normally what you do is you take your air operating point and you set it to the upper left hand portion of the screen. And the way you do that is you go into the display menu, horizontal position, you bring that over right about in there somewhere. And then you take the vertical position and go up. So now when you hit null, that's where your operating point is. Our coil's unloaded. That's why no matter where I move my probe, the null point stays put right there because that's where I set it. And then all we're going to do is we take ferrite. Now, if you remember from your studies, ferromagnetic materials reside above the non-ferromagnetic material realm in the impedance plane. So how we calibrate this is we just take the signal from ferrite, which is magnetic or has magnetic properties, and you will take that impedance trajectory and or phase it so it goes up on the impedance plane. So I'm going to set this block down. I'm going to touch my probe to the ferrite and you're just going to watch which direction the impedance dot goes. It goes, where does it go? It doesn't go anywhere. Uh oh, now it's troubleshooting time. Is my probe hooked up? Did I hook it up to the right cable? You see how you got to troubleshoot? I don't even have the cable hooked up. It would help if I hooked up the cable. There we go. Now we'll get some action. See, a little troubleshooting goes a long way. All right. Now that probably changed my operating point. So let's hit erase null. Huh? There. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to take and touch this down to. The ferrite and it's gonna go up so it's almost phased the right way but I'm gonna adjust it just a little bit so it goes like straight up and it doesn't really matter that we can't see the rest of the signal but it's vectored up all right that's me touching the probe to 304 stainless and it's going down into the right because that material is non ferromagnetic if it was magnetic it would be having a trajectory more up and to the right. But because it's non-ferrous, it goes down to the right. So over here with the unloaded coil, that has high inductive reactance and low resistance because there's not anything sucking energy away from this coil. But when you bring it slowly down and you reduce liftoff, you're reducing liftoff and you're bringing it down to the three or four stainless, your inductive reactance is going down because you're loading the coil and your impedance value keeps increasing because the apparent resistance is going up because that material is sucking energy away from the coil. All right, that's 304 stainless. That's your liftoff line. That's 100% liftoff. That's a little bit of liftoff. And that's zero liftoff or contact. All right. Let's go to copper nickel next, which is the second one right here. Zero liftoff, mm, decreasing liftoff. Actually, that's 
liftoff. And then that's some liftoff. And then this is contact. So that blows off screen, which tells me that my gain is too high for this sort of lab setup. So what I'm going to do is hit the erase button while still holding the material air. Oh, that's my display button. I don't want that one. I want to hit my gain control and just bring it back up here somewhere. I'll hit erase and I'm gonna hit the ferrite, three or four stainless, copper, nickel. Now, the order that these materials are laid out in the conductivity sample, they're gonna rotate clockwise in terms of conductivity. So when I go to magnesium, it's gonna be down here somewhere. 100% lift off there, bringing my probe closer to the material, decreasing lift off. There's contact, again, that gain is too high. So I'm gonna bring it up here somewhere. We'll hit erase. Ferrite, wait, wait. Ferrite, 304 stainless, copper, nickel, magnesium. 70, 75 T6 is probably gonna blow off screen. So probably gonna have to bring the gain back down a little bit to bring him back on. And then I'm just gonna quickly hit the 70, 75, zero. And I think I have a copper sample around here somewhere, right there. Let's go touch the copper. Copper's blowing off screen, so we'll bring the gain back a little bit. Ferrite, 304 stainless, copper, nickel, magnesium, 7075T6, copper. There is the copper right there. Now, if you want to make this curve a little prettier, you can take and crank some horizontal gain into it. Now I'm holding the probe on the copper. Let's see, race. Now let's see what the conductivity curve looked like. See, what we did by increasing the horizontal gain was we're um, uh, making it easier to identify the different materials. But let's crank in a little vertical gain here once that we're on the copper. And since we know that copper is going to be the farthest uh, down vertically, we'll just bring it right to the edge. Now we got ferrite, 304, copper, nickel, magnesium, 7075 T6, 7075 zero. Copper, well, I brought it a little too far. How about that? How about that one? Boom. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. So now you have the conductivity curve. Actually, you don't even see the curve there yet because that doesn't come until you get your little pencil and you draw the curve. So the conductivity curve is just connecting all the points. Air, no, uh, yeah, you don't use ferrite. That was just used to set your phase. But you would connect the air, which is the unloaded coil point. And you draw that line through the 304 stainless, the copper nickel, the magnesium, 7075 T6, 7075 zero and copper. And you get that nice comma shaped curve. Now that you have that curve set up and you'd label them with a little sticky or a little pencil. And then you would go touch some unknown materials. So I'm going to have to cover this up somehow, demonstrate this. All right, here we go. I'm going to use the handy slide rule to cover up the values. Okay, let's test the first one. I'll hit your ace. Oh, that goes straight up. What do you think that is? How about ferrite? Let's test out this. The uh, we'll go to the third over from ferrite. What do you think that is? Well, that looks about the same color as magnesium. Is that magnesium? Let's touch it and find out. I'm gonna touch it. Ready? follows the same exact line. That's because that's magnesium, see it? All right, we'll try one more. Here we got 7075 T6 on my known sample. Now if I was sorting material and I came to this one and I thought maybe that was 7075 zero, pretty sure that's what that is. Let's confirm it. It would follow the same line but it doesn't. Why? I have a mystery material. But you know what? If I go back to my known sample, it's actually 7075T6. See? It's 
the one right here, second from the right. And when I go back on the other sample and hit 70, 75, T6, it's just going to follow that straight line almost, right? So that's how you use known samples to set up a calibration uh, conductivity curve. And then you can use the known points to identify other materials. This concludes the lab on conductivity curves.